with most coaching relationships, you, you reach that ugly chaotic phase in the middle where you're like, I don't really see the end. I don't see where this is going. I don't see how I get to the other side until that moment when you do. <laughs> and that is, yeah, that, you know, and you go at it all kinds of ways to get there until the moment you hope that moment comes where they do see it. And, uh, and then it's okay. You see it. So, Let's figure out the next steps for you to continue to walk and get to it. I admit to wanting that phase to go on for some time. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's so much that we find in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I think that that's one of the, um, the takeaways that I'm seeing from this journey is that people have a, a deeper uh, acceptance of that phase. You know, whereas I think for a lot of folks in this journey and a lot of folks in the world, they're afraid of that place and they don't want to go into that place. And it felt like people started to realize like, oh, it's okay to sit there in that uncomfortable, not knowing. And I mean, and multiple people said in the feedback of um, learning that my, my fears about how bad something was going to be were never as real as what it actually was. And so that is another way. Always, yeah. Yeah. The metaphor that came up in one of our practice groups was the the caterpillar to the butterfly, that imaginal mm -hmm. space where everything just turns to melt. <laughs> you know, this mushy, I don't know what the hell this is. Um, and and that, that being an incredibly difficult place to be in, but an incredibly powerful place because if it was if it was hurried up, then it, it doesn't take its full form and it just moves like half half created. So I totally resonate with what you're saying, Jean, is like basking in that uncomfortable, mushy place until it finds its form on its own is something that we noticed as super valuable for pretty much everyone. Yeah, I want to make it into some kind of equation where it's like the longer you sit in that space exponentially, the higher up you level up when you come out of it. Mm -hmm. But that's probably false. But, but that's fine. Like, <laughs> I want to offer some kind of... Well, okay. I think what, what, what you need to be there and what you need to stay there is this sense of grit because you still have to believe in the middle of that meltdown that you have what it takes to move forward. And just building that is such a key skill for whatever's coming your way in the future. So it's that grit grit building place, that resilience building place that is necessary for, for life. Can I highlight and asterisk that <laughs> and say yes. that that might be one of the like bullet point value propositions that you want to provide at, at Mycelium? You know, I think you really named it, Desiree. Yeah, I mean, because that's, you're right. I mean, that's the skill that gets you going. That's the skill that lets you recover. That's the skill that whatever is coming down your pipe, you must have in life. And you're right. The longer you sit in that space, the stronger that has to be so that you can believe that you can actually get out and move forward from that space. So. Okay. It's, it's basically, we call it the grown zone. It's divergence, con grown zone convergence. And the grown zone space, that's where all the innovation happens. So the more you can stay in the uncomfortableness, the more ideas, the more things can actually inform what it is you're trying to create. So. Yeah. Okay, but now we're pointing to why I think it's exponential. It's like both because the creativity and because the muscle for grit, the combination of those things is what's leading to the exponential leveling up in the outcome. I would, I would also say um, I would add integration to it too because when you stay in that space longer you can actually integrate whereas if you just go in it and jump out this is hot <laughs> 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 